Today I want to shine some light on five Resident Evil art pieces on DeviantArt that deserve some recognition. Especially since DeviantArt continues to drop trash art by the millisecond. Seriously, it took me forever to find these five gems since there are a lot of cringy Resident Evil fans that just can't help but drop porn and weird fetishes. I mean a B.O.W. with boobs. But anyways, let's begin with... Pietro Ant, Resident Evil. This art piece may not have all sorts of extreme details when compared to the rest, in fact it may also appear incomplete, but that's just a part of the charm towards this art piece. It's a drawing of Resident Evil 1, and possibly 2 since it includes the protagonists of both games, but I think Pietro Ant was just having fun with his art piece. I wish I could see this become animated, just for a short 5 minute video if possible, or additional images that continue with this art piece. It kind of reminds me of the Metal Slug concept art, at least for some of Pietro Ant's other Resident Evil art pieces. They're just as good as the main one I'm presenting of his. Their goofy expressions are very welcoming considering the fact that the very first Resident Evil video game cover has Chris with a goofy expression as well. So I'm guessing this is what Jill and the others would have looked like if they were in the cover instead. Be sure to check out Pietro Ant's gallery if you like this art style. Diogo Saito, Resident Evil. As you can see, this art piece was made back in 2002, and I actually remember seeing it many years ago, so I'm glad I actually found it. Just like Pietro Ant's art piece, this one doesn't have as much details when compared to the rest on this video, but like every good art piece, there's a lot of passion put into this, and it's a good representation of how terrifying it was to venture through the Spencer Mansion the first time we ever played the game, whether it was the original or remake. The only thing that shouldn't have been included was that badass looking liquor. It belongs in Resident Evil 2, but my guess is that Diogo Saito was also a fan of liquor, so he said, fuck it, it's his art, his rules. Plus, it only intensifies the situation that Chris is in. Sarus, Resident Evil. This art piece is full of surprises. You got Chris, Jill, Rebecca, Barry, the Tyrant, the first zombie you encounter, a couple crows in Cerberus, including a B.O.W. Hunter and Zombified Forest Spayer. But most importantly, you got the Spencer Mansion in the back. I like how it's shown in a view where it's almost like you're at the front entrance looking up. The light shining from Rebecca's flashlight is very impressive. The glare, the color, it makes you believe that light is really glowing from that area of the picture. Also, each character is holding on to their iconic weapon in the game. And as for Wesker, he appears to be monitoring his star's guinea pigs like in that intro to the Biohazard patchy slot game. Very well done, Cyrus. Make sure to check out his gallery as well. Louis Coraline, Resident Evil Retro Poster. Here's an art piece no one can complain about. A retro poster of the first Resident Evil game. Even the text and title looks perfect. Jill is holding on to what appears to be a forest axe, but even though she doesn't use one in the game, I can see it being used in a movie adaptation of the game. The first zombie you encounter makes an appearance in the picture as well. It looks even creepier in this design, similar to the illustrations from Stephen Gemmell. The Spencer Mansion looks quite spooky, a little different, but nonetheless still spooky. And seeing it combined with the zombie's head with these twisted roots is so eerie and bizarre. I'd love to see what Louis Coraline could do for the next two sequels. Message him about it if you too would gladly welcome another fantastic retro poster, only this time on Resident Evil 2 and 3. Chaos Draco, Biohazard, The Beginning. Here's another art piece that's a perfect representation for the first Resident Evil game. The color effects match perfectly with the characters on the background, making it such a vivid art piece. The left center is green, matching with the color of the B.O.W. Hunter, as well as the Arkley Forest above it. Chris's outfit matches with the color as well, and seeing as Rebecca matches with the same color as the group of undead, it could represent that she's being followed by them as well as a state of panic. Jill and Wesker have a blue texture, almost like they represent a glimmer of hope. But the top right side of the picture is red, which Wesker is also on. This could represent his dark intentions while appearing on the good side. Barry is also on the red side, but I'm guessing that's because of his iconic colored outfit, as well as the fact that he follows Wesker's orders and betrays his friends until the very end of the game. I also like how the umbrella logo is right above the Arkley Mountains, mixing well with both the moon and the red texture on the top side. Seriously, this is an amazing art piece. Chaos Draco has one hell of an imagination, and when you see art pieces such as this one, it means we still got hope for quality art on DeviantArt. And with that said, 
That's it for the video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like, share, and subscribe if you haven't. And if you'd like to see extra videos, have early access to upcoming videos, and you'd like to vote on what you'd want to see next, or you simply just want to see your name at the end of the videos, then feel free to support the channel by donating a single dollar to my Patreon. The link is on the description along with the link to my Facebook page, DeviantArt, and Twitter. But anyways, I'll see you all in the next video, and remember to have an awesome day.